Hi, I'm Dennis Saylor. The video you're about to see was created over 20 years ago, but we still get a lot of questions on our older machines, so we're making it available online. Hello, I'm Dennis Saylor with Dixie Narco, and in this presentation we're going to be covering all of the programming features of the new HVV, Pepsi's high visibility vendor. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and get started. To enter into the programming, first you have to press the service button located in the center of the transaction panel on the control board. Press the little blue button, and now we can enter into the programming and start working. Historical data is the first thing that comes up on the programming. Historical data is just that. It is a historical number that is non-resettable. Button number one will give you the total number of dollars. Button number two will give you the total number of VINs. And button number three will give you the total number of VINs by selection. It will automatically scroll through from selection one through selection twelve. Once it's given you the number on selection number 12, it will automatically go back to the beginning prompt, which is historical data. Using buttons 1 and 2 together, we can go to the next prompt, which is interval data. Interval data can be reset. Again, button 1 will give you the total dollars, button 2 the total VINs, button 3 the VINs by selection, and it will automatically scroll through all 12 selections. Once it's gone through all 12 selections, it will again go back to the beginning prompt of interval data. Now that we're back at, at interval data, we can press and hold button number four. It's approximately five seconds and the display will change indicating that the counters have been reset. Set price. You have the capability of setting each of the different VIN prices uh, or different selections to a different VIN price. Pressing button number one, it'll scroll in five cent increments. If you go beyond the price that you want, you can release it, press it again, and it'll start dropping in five cent increments. Same thing with button number 2 through 12. Or you can, end up, you can set each of the selections at the same VIN price, for one VIN price, by holding buttons 3 and 4 together. Single price set comes up on the display. Cash settings. Button 1 to enter into it, and it's the fill the coin mech mode. This is the method, what used to be referred to as tube fill. Now it's uh, fill the coin mech. Enter into it, and you can start inserting coins into the top of the coin mech to set your float level in the coin mech. Button one to get back out of that. One and two is dump coin mech, same as coin dump mode, dump coin mech. Button number one to enter into it. Press button number one again, it'll dispense nickels. Buttons one and two to scroll to dimes. And we press button one then to dispense the dimes. Buttons one and two to go to quarters. Button one to dispense the quarters. And then return comes up after pressing buttons one and two together. It takes you back to the dump coin mech prompt. Coin rules. Coin rules is no more than a correct change function. The factory default is on, uh, on indicating that when the tubes go low in the coin mech, the correct change message will come on and correct change will be necessary in order to make a vent. Should you choose to, you can change it to off, which allows the customer to accept money or the vending machine to accept money. The correct change light will never come on and allow the customer to insert money, make a purchase and possibly not get the correct change back. Once again, the factory default is on in escrow. There are four different escrow features in here. Let's see if we can scroll through them here. Price one. Price one is what comes up as a um, 
force VIN mode. Uh, once you meet and exceed uh, the minimum VIN price, you're, you're locked into a VIN. Uh, changing it by holding button number two, or button number one, I'm sorry, it will change to price two. Price two is a no sale feature that uh, allows the, you know, the customer to insert money and once they meet that, that minimum VIN price, uh, unless it's in a correct change mode, they can't get their money back. Select four is the, um, the old ES4 mode where a uh, dollar bill is inserted and, and stacked and should they press a selection that's sold out, they can hit the reject button and they get four quarters back. Select one is uh, the old ES1 feature where the bill is stacked, or the bill, the bill is taken into the bill validator and held in an escrow mode. If that selection that's pressed is sold out, they can hit the reject button, the dollar bill that was inserted comes back. Now if you're in over a dollar VIN price, the initial dollar will be stacked and any coins that are returned or any money that is returned by pressing that will come through the, um, the coin mech as coinage. Multi-vend. Multi-vend allows you to set the vending machine, if it's turned on, allows the vending machine to take a, a, a large denomination uh, if the validator can accommodate it. The customer will make a selection and instead of paying back the change automatically, it holds that as a credit. So if there's enough credit there to make another selection, they can go ahead and make another Another selection and the drink uh, is vended. In order to get your change back then, you have to press the return button in order to get the change. Return by pressing button number one will take me back to the cash settings prompt and all those features indicate me are, are just the, uh, the cash setting features that are in there. User prompt, user menu prompt. Button number one to enter into it and then uh, space to sales is the first thing that comes up. You can view and see what your space to sales are, and space to sales is no more than what columns are assigned to what buttons. And this feature uh, operates exactly the same as, as uh, standard Pepsi vending machines. The, uh, the only difference is we're working with 12 select buttons and nine columns, so there's different uh, columns ganged than what you're used to. Button number one, press it, it'll say selection one, column one, turn it on, turn it off. Column two, turn it on, turn it off. The one flashing behind it, the one or a zero flashing, it, it represents on or off. And we, we've uh, combined columns one and two on button number one. We scroll through all the column settings, press button number one, and it takes me back to the selection setting. Just by leaving it set here, it will flash and say that column one and two are assigned to button number one. And what we can do is go back in here and remove that column two. Changing that to a zero. And at the return prompt, press button number one. Now it says selection one and then a one shows up on the display. You can do this through here, through the uh, entire select panel changing all of these settings that you want. There is a factory default and uh, there's a label on inside the vending machine that will refer to that. That will let you know what that factory default is so you know what buttons are assigned to what columns when you receive the vending machine. Buttons one and two take me to the return. Press button number one it takes me back to the space to sales setting. This is the time feature. This is the feature that we use to set the clock in the vending machine for the features that have uh, time sensitive uh, settings. Press button number one, the word year comes up and then we can scroll through the years just by holding button number one. Button number two, you know, one and two to go to the next feature which is month and we can change that month by pressing button number one. And then buttons one and two to go to day and we can change the day setting on here as well. Hours and minutes. Button number one will change the hours and it's military time. You just scroll through and set the time for whatever time you want. 
button number two, then it will adjust the minutes. Buttons one and two together will take me back to hour minute. And then daylight savings time is the next feature. Button one will enter it, will enter you into that and change it from off, which is the factory default, through the different um, country prompts, because there's three different settings for the daylight savings time. And in most cases here in the United States, we want to leave it on American. Next feature is re return. Press button number one, it takes me back to the time prompt. Language settings. Pressing button number one will just scroll you through the various different languages. There's a, a number of different languages in here. Just uh, release button number one when you get to the country of choice. Buttons one and two will take you to the electronic counter. The electronic counter is your uh, external um, counter or, or buttons that you can press to read your, your counter readings from the outside of the machine without opening it. The uh, factory default by pressing button number one will show up as being 4231. Now you can adjust that by holding that in the button number one in and then you can change the numbers to uh, whatever you want and, and it can be any, any combination of a single digit number. Just put this one back at 4231, and then it goes back to the electronic counter prompt, letting you know that it took. Limited access. Limited access is the feature that you're very familiar with as far as uh, shutting off certain selections during certain times of the day in schools. Enter in, pressing button number one, and it'll be the selects. And again, the way it works is it'll show the selection button that you're pressing. That, that you want to make the adjustment on with a, as long as you hold button one in, it'll toggle between a one and a zero in the far right character. The one being that button is activated or affected by the limited access feature, the zero meaning it is not. Scroll through the selection buttons using buttons one and two to make your adjustments. You can hit none to clear them out. That works very well for going in. If you're changing the, the venue, you can uh, pull that vending machine instead of going in and turning each of these off at the none prompt, just press button number one and it turns all of them, um, those features off on all those selections. Days is the next feature within limited access. Same thing, it just scrolls through Monday, um, through all of the days, Monday through uh, Sunday and then all days at the end of it we can press button number one and it'll take all seven days of the week then have been uh, set for the limited access feature. None is also a feature here that you can uh, stop on to uh, turn that feature off on all the days. And then return will take us back to the days prompt. Then we have a start time. Start one, you're going to adjust your hours using button number one. You adjust the minutes by pressing button number two. Buttons one and two take us back to start one. We also have a stop. We've got to tell it what time we want to stop this feature. Again, button one will adjust your hours, button two will adjust your minutes. Then one and two will take you out of that back to the stop one prompt. We have a start two and a stop two. They do the same thing, just allowing you to do this limited access on two different times during a 24 hour period. Return will take us back to the limited access prompt. That all, that's all the different features within limited access. This next feature is secondary price. This allows you to adjust the VIN price or allow the vending machine through the controller to adjust the VIN price up or down on given days at given times on those days. 
to enter into it, we press button number one, the first thing that comes up is price. It's asking to make a price change. What you're going to do if you're selling it for 75 cents and you want to move it to 80 cents, you uh, press button number one and it will start adjusting your VIN price. Get to the price that you want and uh, you cannot do the, the, the mass grouping like you did in the normal uh, VIN price settings. You have to adjust each select button individually for the VIN price. But uh, once you set the price, it's asking what days. I'm going to go in here and let's, uh, let's say that it's only on Friday, so we're going to scroll to Friday, press button number one, and uh, make sure that there's a one beside it, indicating that on Fridays this feature is activated. Buttons one and two to take us to return. Buttons one and two again for a start, so it's asking a start time setting the clock for the time that you want it to, to begin on. So you just uh, pick your hour, it's a military time factor again, and set the, the start time. This is the time that the second price will kick in. Button one is your hours, button two is your minutes. Now it wants to know stop time, and again button number one is your hours, button two is your minutes. You scroll to the hour that you want to stop, set your, cl your clock for that. Return comes up, taking us back to the secondary price prompt, which indicates that's all the features within secondary price. Light. It's the light controls. We're utilizing uh, relays for energy conservation for shutting off lights and uh, the compressor during uh, different times of days. This feature is just for the lights. Button number one, enter into it. It wants to know what days. What days do we want to turn the lights off on this vending machine? And we can scroll again through all the days and adjusting it with a one out beside of it indicating that that's the day that's going to be activated on. Or we can go to all days and press it. You'll see it blink uh, slightly indicating that it's accepted that as uh, all days. None is also a feature so if you want to go in and turn this off you don't have to go to each one of the, the days and shut it off. You just go to none and it turns this feature off on all days. Return comes up, press button number one. Next it's asking for start. Again, it just wants to know what start time. There's a start time and a stop time. We've done enough of those. I don't think we need to go through each of those again. Enable. It wants to know, do you want to enable this feature or do you not want to enable it? Pressing button number one will toggle between on and off. And then buttons one and two will take you to return. Button one will take us back to the light prompt. Buttons one and two will then take us to refrigeration. This is um, the feature for shutting off the refrigeration system during certain hours in, say, office buildings to save on energy. It has some other features. Once we get into it, we'll get into those as well. But button number one, first of all, wants to know the temperature setting. From the factory, its default is 35 degrees. We're utilizing a temperature sensor in this vending machine, which is different from what you've been used to used to having a, a thermostat. It's all done electronically now. We can adjust that temperature by holding button number one and it'll start climbing. And that range looks like it's from 41 to 32. But again, the factory default is 35, so I'm going to put it back there. And just while it's scrolling, when it gets to the 35 degree setting, just let off of it. Buttons one and two, it's asking Celsius or Fahrenheit. Button number one will display an F. And if you continue to hold it, it'll just toggle between a C and an F for Celsius or Fahrenheit. Buttons one and two is display. What it does is it will display the temperature of the, um, the internal temperature of the vending machine, letting you know that when you walk up to it that it's 35 degrees internally or whatever it is. That is automatically uh, in off mode. And you want to change it from an off to on, just press button number one. It'll toggle between off and on. Days, it wants to know what days do we want to change this, um, this feature as far as having the uh, refrigeration system shut off. Again, it's just you know entering in, you have your choice of all days, no days, or each day individually that you can make the adjustment on. Start and stop times again. It's when you're going to start the feature, stop the feature. Also, it has a 
storage temperature. If you are going to um, utilize this feature that turns off the compressor, you don't want the drinks to get hot from sitting in there because you know when the system's off, the fan's still running, and it's going to be um, uh, generating some heat from that, and the drinks will get warm. You don't want the uh, drinks to get um, 70 degrees or better, you know, then, and have to start from that start point um, to get cold again at the beginning of the next day when you want it to come back on. So you go in here, factory default is 60 degrees. It gives it a semi-chill on the drink. You can adjust that, and that number uh, it will scroll up or down in, uh, to just about any range that you want. Storage enable. Again, you can uh, turn it on or turn it off by pressing button number one. It'll toggle between on and off. Return, press button one, it takes me back to the refrigeration prompt, which is all the features within refrigeration. Next prompt is free vent. This enables the vending machine through the use of a free vent kit, which is a key switch and a harness that connects to the controller to um, when the key switch is turned, uh, when the free vent uh, is turned on in this function, when the key switch is turned, it allows the vending machine to go into a free vent mode. It sets all selections on a free vent and it also kicks in a counter that allows it to uh, count how many drinks were given away while it was on free vent. To enter into it, press button number one and it's asking for enable. Button one again will toggle from on to off. You can change your, the feature just by toggling on to off with button number one. The display feature is how many drinks were given away. This is that counter that it en engaged. By pressing button number one, it will uh, light up the number of drinks that were given away. Buttons one and two will then take you to reset. This will reset that number so that uh, you can start like an interval data uh, feature. By pressing button number one, it'll reset. Buttons one and two will take you to return. It takes us back to free vent prompt, which is all the features under free vent. Sales message. This is that ice cold Pepsi message that goes across the front. It comes from the factory default as being on, so it will scroll that ice cold Pepsi message across the front. You can turn that off holding button number one while in the sales message mode. Button number one will toggle it from on to off. Recharge. Recharge is a feature that if you have your the vending machine is equipped with a debit card reader that is set up to allow you to put money back onto your card. Uh, if it's turned on, you can do this just by strictly pressing button number one and it'll change from off to on. While in the on position, you can um, recharge or redeposit credits back to that card only if the card reader is set up to allow that. And again, by pressing button number one, it will change it from on to off. Button one and two will take you to return. Return by pressing button number one takes us back to the user menu prompt, which takes us out of that user submenu. The next feature is diagnostics. Diagnostics is the built in diagnostics feature for the vending machine. Button number one will enter in and it comes up for selection. At this point, it's asking I can press any of the select buttons and it will light up the number of the button that I'm pressing. What that does is verifies that that switch and the harnessing connected from that switch to the control board are communicating. Pressing buttons one and two will take us to the sold out empty test. Button one to enter into it and it will scroll through the numbers on the columns that are sold out automatically. In this case, we have product in column number one, so it skips the number one. But number one takes us back to the sold out empty test mode. One and two takes us to the sold out full test. Sold out full test, by pressing button number one, it'll start scrolling any columns that have drinks in there. Now, if you're working with an empty vending machine, you just go across here and hold down on the sold out paddles of the different columns. What it'll do then is as I hold them down, it'll change to the column indicated by the button or by the number on there. That will allow you to test all of the different uh, sold out columns. Button one to go back to the sold out full test mode. One and two, 
motor test. This comes up and says motors. By pressing button number one, we enter into that and we can scroll to the various columns that you want to test the motor on. Press button number one then and it'll actually do a VIN test. The, the display will read VIN. The motor should be running. Uh, if a motor is not running when it's saying VIN, that's an indication that there's not a complete circuit from the control board down to that particular VIN motor. Return, button number one takes us back to the motor's prompt. CoinMech test. CoinMech is a function that allows you to test the CoinMech for its uh, proper operations. We insert a quarter, it'll display 25 cents. Insert a dime, it'll go to 35 cents. As you add money, it'll add uh, the, the denomination up. Press button number two, it'll pay the money back that, it, that you had inserted into it. Pressing buttons one and two will take us to the note acceptor test. The green lights are flashing out front already. Takes the bill in and displays a one dollar credit. If I press button number three, it'll pay the bill back to me. If I reinsert it, it comes up with the one dollar credit again. I press button number two and we'll stack it and it goes back to the note acceptor prompt. Display test. Press button number one and it'll light all the little segments that are on the display. Button number one again to take me back to the display prompt. Relay test. Now we talked about earlier about having the energy conservation mode and using relays to um, shut these features off. Go into the relay test. It's very important that the compressor be unplugged. Now I've already got it unplugged because when you go into it by pressing button number one, it says compressor and a one. Now I change it to a zero by pressing button number one and it's activating that relay. Now if the compressor was plugged in, it would be turning the compressor off. And if you were to continually hang on to or lay against the uh, button number one, it would constantly be turning that compressor on and off. That's why you have to have it shut off. But this tests the, the relay itself. Button one and two will take me to a fan. This is your evaporator fan by turning it on and off by button number one. And then the lights. Press button number one and lights go off and come back on while you're holding it changing toggling from a 1 to a 0. Buttons 1 and 2 together takes us to return. Return takes us back to relay test, which in turn takes us to return again, which is the end of the diagnostics features and takes us back to the diagnostics prompt. Buttons 1 and 2 will then take you to auto test. Auto test is a feature that it was designed for the factory for production use to enter into the, uh, the auto test feature and let the vending machine go through a series of operations and checking the different features. Utilizing this in the field is not a good idea, mainly because if, it, if you don't press a select button hard enough while you're going through the select button test, it says everything from that select button on is, is uh, not functioning, not communicating with the board. So it can send you down a blind alley looking for problems that don't exist. The diagnostics feature it was designed for the field test of the, all the different components. So just stick with that. Let the uh, auto test feature be used inside the factory. Buttons one and two takes us back to the diagnostics. We go back to return by holding one and two. Ice cold Pepsi comes up, which means we're out of the programming mode and all the features that we've gone through are all the features within the programming. I trust you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos in the link in this video's description.